All right, uh, well, let's see if we can uh, move on to uh, a second area looking at uh, treatment options uh, in ovarian cancer. Uh, in December of this past year, 2014, bevacizumab was approved for uh, use in recurrent ovarian cancer. Um, Rob, you want to start off uh, talking a little bit about the approval of bevacizumab, what that resulted from, and uh, where we go from here with that? Yeah, sure. So, you know, um, this was a, um, this, the, this approval in the United States came in platinum resistant patients. It was based on a um, randomized trial um, that was uh, physician choice of uh, chemotherapy versus chemotherapy plus bevacizumab. Um, and it showed a, it was almost a doubling of the PFS and uh, without a measurable change in overall survival. But it was felt that um, in this group of patients, uh, for which uh, the, the limited to two priors, um, that um, there were a limited number of options, and there was seemed to be a, a benefit. I think um, importantly in the in the how the patients tolerated treatment and their impact. Because many of these patients who presented in that trial, unlike a lot of the other trials that we've done, actually had symptoms, and we saw that under the effect effectiveness of the treatment, those symptoms resolved in a in a significant way. So I think the combination of the uh, patient population, the availability of active therapies, the demonstration of benefit, and um, all combined with the, with the uh, quality of life assessments that were done on the trial, uh, I think it provided a convincing argument that uh, bevacizumab in this case was actually of value. And well, that's and, how got and it. That specifically was in the platinum resistant, resistant setting. Yeah. Uh, you want to, and again, for the benefit of those in the audience who may not deal with that much ovarian cancer, define what we mean by platinum resistant ovarian cancer. Okay. Yeah, well, I think your, your group actually was the one that defined it by the GOG. I think we used, we use a, a number of different definitions. I think um, uh, we have drawn a line in the sand for the basis of clinical trial purposes at six months, but I think um, um, that definition has been a little gray, but between uh, patients who progress after first line therapy between zero and six months, we call them resistant or refractory and resistant. Um, and those that are after six months as quote unquote sensitive, and then there's that six to 12 month, which is kind of a gray zone of uh, pseudo sensitive. Um, and the label is with chemotherapy. That's exactly right. And there right. are three options right. weekly paclitaxel, topotecan, and pegylated liposomal doxorubicin. Right. Which is the best backbone? Out of those three? Uh, well, that's the label. Yeah, I, I think uh, <laughs> that's going to end up being a matter of personal preference. But why don't we get everybody's opinion? Uh, which of those would you say was the best <laughs> chemotherapeutic agent to That's use with bevacizumab? That's a great way to moderate. You just basically... <laughs> yeah, you're right. you're right. a mirror. You right. I love it. So I, I will go it. first. I like <laughs> weekly taxol. Okay. okay, all right, all right. Yeah, so I think that, you know, what Brad's getting to is that, you know, and actually there were, there's a, a fourth kind of combo because topotecan could be given in the weekly format or in the daily times five. At, at, and, and it's interesting because at least uh, three of those regimens were in non-FDA approved dosing. So the liposomal doxorubicin and the two topotecan doses. So, but um, I think what, you know, what that trial was, and I, I kind of shaded over it because the chemotherapy essentially, arms were essentially three randomized phase two studies brought together. They were capped out at, at an enrollment of 120 apiece. And so if you look at them individually as phase twos with similar eligibility criteria, the weekly paclitaxel arm appeared to do better than the um, liposomal doxorubicin, which did better than the topotecan. But we know from large phase three trials that the, that the topotecan PLD question has, has been answered, a single agent had been answered. So it's hard to draw those conclusions, but from a biological sense, I like the weekly paclitaxel, the metronomic effects. Yeah, I was afraid you weren't gonna answer the question there for a while. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, coming back to you. I, Dr. Secord? I <laughs> feel very uh, similar to both of you in terms of weekly paclitaxel, but I also use bevacizumab with liposomal doxorubicin as well. Okay, Dr. Herzog? Well, it, it's interesting data because it depends on how you want to slice it. If you, if you uh, want to look at just hazard ratios, the biggest aid of adding BEV was actually with topotecan. <laughs> so uh, topotecan itself in that particular urea trial did, did really... It, it, it but really in terms of raw results, yeah. topotecan yeah, was the worst of the so three. Again, if you're looking at absolutes yeah. or you're looking yeah. at medians or you're looking at HR, you always told me you were an <laughs> HR person. <laughs> 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 and, and now you're going with uh, medians, so I, I don't know what to think about that. But uh, no, in, in, in practice, if the patient doesn't have significant neuropathy, um, mm -hmm. probably weekly paclitaxel is my first choice, followed very closely by pegylated liposomal doctor. Okay, and Dr. Monk? So I, I think it's all about individualization. Uh, you, you pointed out the neuropathy issue with mm -hmm. the weekly paclitaxel, which is weekly three out of four, but also the scheduling. Yep. So yep. I, I use a lot of PLD. Um, with, with bevacizumab on, on label here. See, the thing we don't understand is that weekly paclitaxel is being used increasingly in the upfront setting. Yeah. 
So if you used it up front and now you want to use it at the time of recurrence, does it maintain the hypothesis that it's the best regimen? So if, if, if I don't use bevacizumab frontline, she got weekly. Mm -hmm. So the fact now that she has platinum resistant recurrence, I'm reticent to give weekly again because of the neuropathy and mm -hmm. because of the scheduling issue. Mm -hmm. So you, it's not as simple as, as, oh, looking at the hazard ratio or looking at the level of activity. Right. I mean, it's, it, it, yeah. Okay, overall what, survival uh, was longest in the weekly paclitaxel and bevacizumab group. It was over 24 no months. No question, but what happens you know, if that woman... One of the longest ones we've seen. What happens if she would have got well, weekly paclitaxel frontline, though? See? Also, well, we, we, don't don't know. Know, yeah. we don't know on what basis or, or on what basis a patient was given either weekly taxol or topotecan yeah. or doxol, whether there's a difference in those patient populations. Yeah, so. Tate, I, th I think we have to be very careful in over-interpreting that data. That's that, that was I said. not the intent of it, and it's, exactly you know, right. it's easy to draw those conclusions, but there may be some confounding biases that we don't even understand that right. were involved in that. Generating. Okay. Um, even though it looks like, by the way you stratify, they looked fairly equal. It wasn't okay. a randomized trial. That's That's right. Right. Having, having said all that, for the benefit of those who are actually going to put this into practice, I want each member of the panel to simply state which chemotherapeutic agent they're most commonly going to use in their practice. Don't give me a lot of caveats. Just what are you going to use? I thought we already did that. I did that. So with no, the caveat didn't. of uh, <laughs> Tom, I did that. Weekly paclitaxel. Oh, Brad, because I use weekly paclitaxel first no, line you, in the absence of Babbitt's PLD. Okay. All right. I said weekly paclitaxel. Well, I'll tell you why I don't use. It. Okay. Can I can I say why but, I don't use PLD? I said what caveat? No. No. Uh, the, uh, all right. Uh,